How much should we blame the euro for the recent rise in populist movements across Europe? I'm Bill Emmett, former editor of The Economist, author of The Fate of the West, and I'm riding around London in a cab today with Niels Tigerson, Professor Emeritus at the University of Copenhagen and a foremost expert on European monetary and fiscal integration. So Niels, do you think that the euro should be blamed, or how much should it be blamed for the rise of populism in, in Europe? This is, of course, two people from countries who are not in the euro. There's no doubt that the euro is blamed by many populist uh, politicians in Europe. Uh, and I can see why, because uh, the euro participation in the euro seemed to make the crisis worse in some countries than it might otherwise have been. I think that is a misperception, but uh, that doesn't uh, detract from what mm. you say. That uh, yes, this has become uh, it has become unpopular in a number of countries, uh, both uh, strong economies and uh, weaker economies. Uh, and uh, the sad fact uh, at this moment has been that a certain distrust has built up between these two groups of countries. And what, what is it about the euro that people, that populists find they can exploit? Is it just because there's an economic crisis and it's associated, or are there characteristics? I think they, the, they the characteristic is uh, the perception that uh, somehow policies are coming from the outside. They're yes. not mm -hmm. determined at home. Uh, they, they are, of course, still determined at home because uh, on fiscal policy, at least, uh, countries have, in fact, not done what they were expected to do no, in from fact. abroad. So uh, that, that is, in a sense, a bit unfair. But in, in terms of monetary policy, uh, there's no doubt that there is a centralized decision-making mechanism. But that, on the other hand, is one that has done rather well during the crisis. Uh, it's the one reason also why we've had a reasonably smooth recovery for the last three years extremely accommodating monetary policies. Mm. And these policies have, of course, been appreciated by particularly the weaker countries. Uh, but they have gone so far that uh, by now they have also attracted criticism in some of the stronger economies, uh, which did not need uh, these policies. So it is in part, of course, uh, also as relates to monetary policy, the fact that uh, policies are not exactly suitable in the same way for countries. Uh, even though they may, on balance, be the right ones. I mean, as you say, the key thing about the euro is that it's being con seemingly controlled from somewhere else. Whether you blame Brussels or Berlin is what you can do. Because I mean, a paradox is that in Denmark there's a populist party that's quite successful. In Britain, the UK Independence Party has been successful, and we're not members of the euro. So they uh, are. Uh, there's a difference between uh, Britain and, and my country, Denmark, uh, in the sense that. Uh, Denmark, we are quite orthodox in terms of the policies required to be in the euro. Yes, you we, are. You uh, are we peg uh, yes. very firmly to the euro. We follow very orthodox uh, mm. fiscal policies. We have large external surpluses. So we are more like uh, Germany and the Netherlands than uh, some of the weaker economies. But still, I mean, the perception there is uh, maybe it's safer to stay out of the euro. Mm. We don't, do we really need to be in there? It may entail some obligations, uh, financial obligations, saving weaker economies or weaker banks in Southern Europe. Uh, but it's not as much an ideological opposition that these are bad policies. Mm. Uh, they are policies, in fact, that come quite naturally to us. Yes. And how do you see in the debtor countries the, the, the view um, the views of the euro evolving now politically? I mean, the in in Italy. We've got an election coming up next year. Well, several parties are at least nominally anti-Euro, the Five Star Movement and the National League. But in France, the Front National seems to be feel that it made a mistake in being so strongly anti-Euro. Um, what's the what, what's the future? Public hold, opinion think? polls in most countries still show that there's a majority support for being in the Euro, and maybe. Uh, uh, Madame Le Pen has taken notice of that in, yes. in France. Mm. But in Italy, I must say, it's wor worrying to see that uh, uh, may, even main, main business newspapers discuss uh, frequently how one could exit the euro. Yes. That is uh, very worrisome. I don't think uh, that that would ever happen because it would be a disaster to do so. Uh, but the mere fact that this continues to be uh, an issue really that's discussed is, is surprising. Because Italy has benefited uh, enormously from being in the euro, despite the problems they have. How has it benefited, would you say? I mean, if you were talking to Italians now, to tell them how you have benefited. 
what would you say? I think they have benefited from a much easier monetary policies, in particular yes. that they've had. They, their debt problem has become at least temporarily manageable yes. in a way that they could not have managed it themselves. Uh, they, they would have had to give up on uh, stable currency, certainly in that case. Uh, yes. Uh, and probably they would have had to face uh, restrictions on their exports because they would have become, uh, in a sense, uh, too competitive or breaking too many of the rules in the European Union if yes. uh, they suddenly had a massive adjustment of the currency. Yes. So I think on balance there's no doubt to me that uh, ECD has benefited as well, but mainly through uh, monetary policy. But also, like other countries in, in a severe fiscal strain, uh, uh, countries do need sometimes uh, an external arbiter to tell them this is uh, you're going too far now, you should be a little bit more cautious. And, uh, uh, if you do need to spend quite the levels of expenses that you do now, you, you should be more oriented towards close projects and yes. less, uh, to transfer payments, things like that. That, I think, is a healthy influence. And that was why, in the first place, most finance ministers in the European Union were keen on being in the Euro, because they felt this strengthened them a bit. Uh, in yes. their, discussions with spending ministries at home. Well, thank you very much, Niels, for taking part in this uh, discussion. Thank in the you. Cab. It's been a pleasure.